while we've been away, I've been busy creating these uh, pieces of modern art. There are a lot of great modeling tools in Maya, and I want to go ahead and start getting into some more of those. I think you're ready. So this cube has already been divided into sections, which is going to make it kind of fun to work with. If I hit Command D, I can duplicate that object, so I have another one. I can also get to the duplicate function under the edit menu right there. If I have two objects and I select both of them, I can combine them into one object. These are treated now as a single object, as far as Maya is concerned, and that allows me to work on both of them as if they were one thing, and then when I go to the sub-object level, I can work with multiple faces, multiple points on those same two meshes, because they're now one. You'll notice that when I did that, you might have seen that the pivot point moved to the center of the world. That's not what I wanted, but that's the default function. The pivot point is going to be centered at the 0, 0, 0 x, y, z axis. So if I want to bring that pivot point back to the center of my new object, my new compound object, I can do that in more than one way. If I hold down D, letter D, you'll see that my manipulator tool changes a little bit. That means that it's free to move now, and if I click and drag it, I can actually move the pivot point to a new location without moving the object. So I let go of D and it's back to normal. If I want a more precise centering of the pivot point, I can go to Modify, Center Pivot, and that pivot point, where the manipulator is, will find its way right to the center of those two objects. That's more convenient for me to handle this object. If I rotate it around, it'll spin about the pivot point. If I didn't move the pivot point and I tried to rotate it, it would rotate about the world where the pivot point lives. So, now let's say I have merged these two objects together, combined them into one object, and I decide later that I want to separate them. Well, I just need to select the faces on one half of that and click this next button here, Separate. This function is also found under the Mesh drop-down. There's the word Separate. And again, my pivot point has been moved to the center of the world. That's not what I wanted, but if you go to Object Mode, you see now these are two separate distinct objects. So I'm going to undo that and go back to a merged object just for a minute to show you some things. As you'll recall, I can select a finite number of faces and using the delete key I can delete those faces. I can do that over here since this is all now part of the same mesh object. And now I'm set up to combine those two ends together. There's more than one way I can do that. Simplest way is probably to select the loop of both of those edges, shift double click on the edge, and to use the bridge function. This button right here will bridge those and it'll create a little extra geometry, a little more than I wanted. But that was a pretty painless way to do it. I just have to clean this up and get rid of some of those extra edges. So if you've been watching the videos, you know that I just need to select those edge loops by double-clicking them. Shift, double-click to get multiple edge loops. And then I can push Control delete to cleanly get rid of those edges and the associated vertices. So now I don't have orphan vertices floating out there. All my vertices are in use, supporting the edges at their connection points. That's efficient geometry there. So if we go back to where we were before, delete those. Um, another way we can close that gap would be to select one edge loop and use the extrude tool. Extrude is a good function here. I click this button right here one time. Don't click it more than once. And you'll notice I get a new manipulator tool. This is a compound manipulator that has the move, scale, and rotate functions all in one. Clearly you see the arrows. You can tell that's the move function, so I can click one of those arrows and drag it along. So that's what I want to do. And I can get pretty close to that other edge there. Um, I haven't quite closed that gap, and I need to know that those are not connected. Even if they're hovering right over each other, they're not merged together, so I'll have to merge them together. With my vertex function, I can also scale those if I wanted to. And I can do that by clicking on one of these cubes on the end here. Not click and drag, just click on the cube and you watch what happens to the center of that manipulator. It becomes a cube. So I've just told Maya and I now want to scale with this multiple function tool. I have my back face culling on so I can see through from the inside of those faces if I get inside there. I like to work that way because it gives me more visibility and lets me know which way my normals are facing and that's going to be important. You don't want to have your normals flipped the wrong way. That can create some strange things with the geometry. So how do I merge those ends together? Well, I will usually select more than I need to here to make sure that I've dragged a marquee selection around both of those ends and then use control select to deselect the ones that I don't want. So now I just have the ends and I can view it in wireframe mode to just make sure I have those two ends of the edges. So if I want to merge these two edge loops together, I can go to Edit Mesh, Merge Components. Click that once, and it looks like nothing happened. Why is that? Well, Merge Components 
has some tool settings, some options here in this box. So I want to click on that rectangle and you'll see there's a threshold. The threshold indicates the distance within which I can merge those components. And in this case it's 0 0.001. That's one thousandth of one unit. That's too small. So if I change that to more like 0 0.1 and now I hit apply, now I can see that those edges have merged together, which is what I wanted. The same thing you'll notice with vertices, when you merge vertices. There is a threshold and you have to make sure that threshold isn't too small or else you'll never be able to merge your components together. So that's two ways of bridging the gap. You can see they both have their advantages.